Well, hello. I'm assigning this COVID-19 project uh, to the students in class um, using an online Excel spreadsheet from Europe. And uh, let me go over a little bit on how you might uh, start doing that, set it up, uh, give you some idea on uh, what to do and what I'm looking for. So let me begin uh, about where you can download uh, this data. It's on the European Center for Disease Prevention and Control. Here's their website right here. And I go there and I look for download today's data on the geographic distribution of COVID-19 cases worldwide. And uh, uh, my date right here that I'm recording this is uh, April the 13th. So presumably they will have all the data up to either the April 12th or April the 13th. It's a huge spreadsheet. Uh, and uh, so, okay, you go here, and you click on this link to download the entire spreadsheet, which I've already done. And uh, so let me, let me go to that there. So here it is, here's the spreadsheet. And they have data, uh, historical data, going back several months on every country in the world in which there is reported data. So uh, alphabetically here, the first country is Afghanistan. And you look across here, you see there's a, a date. So the date that I have, this isn't today's spreadsheet. This is from a few days ago. Uh, April the 10th spreadsheet I have, the most recent data. And um, they say how many cases have been reported. Um, and uh, here we have 61. And this is uh, 61 on that day, I believe. It's not an accumulated. Although if you look at this, you see as the, the reported number of cases is going up, you think it might be accumulated. But for example, right here, we go from 43 to zero. And um, or 15 to 8 so you see this must be day by day data they also have reported the number of deaths and uh, as we know uh, this data is highly uh, suspect because uh, no one as far as I know or almost no one is doing any significant testing maybe only a few countries like in Iceland uh, or to a lesser extent in South Korea where they've actually been testing a lot of people. We don't really have a good idea on how reliable and accurate those tests are either. So the data is, is pretty flaky. Um, not exactly what I would call top quality scientific data. Nevertheless, it's the only data we have. Now, as we go down here, we have all the countries, as I said, they're listed in alphabetical order. So for example, we have Afghanistan, which looks like it has maybe, what about 37 million population. And then we look at Albania, which is not quite 3 million population. Albania has uh, nine reported cases. And uh, so in order to give us some sort of common measure for, for looking at these reported cases, uh, first thing I want to do is take the number of reported cases and divide them by the total population of the country to get a percent. Also, what I'm interested in doing is getting the percent of deaths and related to the reported cases. Now, as we may have learned, there's going to be lag and the number of people who are actually infected is going to be probably significantly greater than the number of reported cases because it takes a while for the infection to become symptomatic and uh, not everyone becomes symptomatic at the same level. And uh, I would assume that for the most part, only the very serious cases are actually tested and then counted as reported cases. But each country would have their own way of counting reported cases. And then deaths, uh, 
are um, likely only going to be from the most serious recorded cases. Although it's, I guess it's possible that they would record a death from a person who has not been tested and they're just estimating that it's a, from the COVID virus. So who knows how this all is happening. But first, so let me, let me talk about how we might then do some of these calculations that I would like you to start off doing. And let me just call this here is uh, a percent infected. So it's the percent of the population that is counted as a case. And to do that, I'm going to put equal here. Let me, let me go in here and expand this out. Um, U, I'll do U and then 200% there. So here we go. So now I'm over here. I'm going to put right in here, I'll put equal. And equal is going to be the total pop is going no the total number of reported cases which is that divided by the total population of the country and then I hit return so you see that's really a very small number uh, 1.6 times 10 to the minus six uh, and uh, which would be 1.6 times 10 to the minus four percent really small I mean. Now, I, what I want to do is I want to copy that formula all the way down to the bottom here. And uh, so I'm going to click on this cell and then copy. That copies the formula. Now, how far down do I have to go here? So let's go all the way to the bottom and see how many rows that is. It's 99.23 rows. Okay. So right in here, uh, what I want to do is I want to go over here, which is the, the window which records the location of the selected cell. And I want to select every cell from here all the way down to, what was that, 99.23. Let's go 99.23. Okay. So click on there, do colon. L and then uh, 9923 is that right? Let me just hit return and uh, let's see how there. So that gets them all. Now I'm going to, after I've copied this already, now I'm going to do paste and it's going to paste the formula into all these cells going all the way down. So I have now computed the number of cases as a percent or a fraction of the population for every country and every date uh, listed in the spreadsheet. Let me do one more thing here. I'm going to come over here and um, let's say do uh, percent deaths. Now this is going to be a slightly different calculation. I don't want percent deaths as a fraction of the total population. I want percent deaths of the people the, who are infected. But the only data I really have to go on are the number of reported cases. So let me do that computation. I'll put equal and then deaths, which is this number, divided by and then cases, and then hit return, and then I'll click back here, copy. Now I come back here and do M colon M 9923, return, and then paste. And that re gives me of the recorded cases that day. Um, how many deaths there are that day. So as I said, there's a time lag there. So I'm actually doing the calculation, dividing apples by oranges, if you like. So it's you know, not exactly what I would call the, the best possible data analysis, but we 
work with what we have. Okay, now, uh, having done that, uh, let me also, uh, now let me go back here, and view to 100% there. So now we're back to this. And um, if we want to do graphs or plots or whatever, um, what I've done is I've uh, just copied the data for the United States. So the United States is pretty down near the bottom alphabetically. United Arab Emirates, United Kingdom, United States. So I've taken all the data for the United States and I've copied that here into this sheet. Now this isn't, these aren't the percent infected now. I'm just showing you, you know, I'm doing a graph. And uh, so I want to uh, do a graph for the number of reported cases. Now I'm not going to select all, all. I'm going to go from this point all the way down to this point. So I'm selecting that. So I'm certainly only going down to month two to February 26th, the end of February. Now I'm going to go to insert and then over here to scatter and look at that data. Now the data is backwards from what I'm used to seeing data because I'm going for the from the present date back in time which is typically not the way we want to do it. We, we, we don't want to go back in time as we move along the x-axis. We want to go forward in time. So how do I deal with that? Well, what I want to do is reverse this x-axis. And uh, so I'm going to do is a control, right click, control click um, on my Mac here. Uh, format axis, let's try that, format axis, and um, now um, values in reverse order right here is what I want. So let me click on that, and that in, by magic uh, does that for me right here. Now, so here's my COVID data going in uh, forward in time along here. And uh, now I'm going to do a curve fit. So I right click again right on the curve. Format add trend line is what I want to do. So by default, it adds a straight line trend line. Okay. And uh, so, you know, not particularly good. I may want to look at logarithmic. It's may be a bit better than a straight line, hard to say. Polynomial, second order polynomial is not bad. And uh, I could do third order polynomial, which is really much better, not so good down here. Fourth order polynomial, which is actually pretty good. Um, so let me go with that fourth order polynomial, the data fit. Now I want to display the equation. So there, so here's the equation. I could pull it up here. And if the text is too small, I could increase the size a bit. You see how that's working for me. Okay. There we go. So there's my equation. Notice the coefficient on the fourth order term is negative. Positive cubic positive square. So this is a large coefficient. No, it's negative square term and a positive linear term and a large positive constant. So interesting. Now, one thing you might want to look at is uh, uh, looking at different countries. What do these polynomials look like? Now, as I suggested, what I want you to do is actually look at the data as a percentage of the population, not uh, in terms of total number of cases, which I haven't done that here. 
but uh, that's sort of what I'm asking you to do is looking at it as a percentage of the population. So do as I say, not as I do. I just wanted to give you some idea here where to find the data on the COVID-19, download it, and then also give you some idea on how we can manipulate that data and perhaps pull some useful information out of it. So uh, next time.